Imagine you go to the office every day with your new favorite jacket. This jacket is sexy, it is unique to you, it gets you compliments from the girl of your dreams at the office, as well as getting you regular compliments. Then one day, Tim from accounting comes up to you and asks you, hey bro, nice jacket, where did you get it from? And you decide not to keep it a secret. You tell him you got it from Reese, it's your favorite jacket, and he goes and buys it. The next day, he comes in with the exact same jacket. Now, Barbara from HR is saying, oh, you guys look cute that you coordinated together. That girl of your dreams is now saying, hey, bro, you're in the bro zone now. You don't look very unique anymore. You're just copying Tim. Now, your steez, your style has been plagiarized. It may seem petty keeping a fragrance a secret, like what are you, the perfume police? Gatekeeping might be a little bit annoying, but I actually don't think it's petty. I think it's very much understandable. Similar to the, the favorite jackets analogy, when you have a scent that's unique to you, it makes her remember you in a certain way. It's annoying when someone else steals something that feels like a part of your identity. There are those common mainstream fragrances that everyone knows, then there are more unique stuff that you wanna to keep to yourself. I completely understand it. I'm gonna give you eight fragrances that are excellent, underrated, under the radar, and will make you stand out. Now, of course, it's a little bit hypocritical that I'm creating a video that um, hopefully gets millions of views, um, but even if it does get millions of views, uh, these fragrances, I think, overall will still stay secret. In my experience, most guys don't even know that Creed Aventus exists, let alone Club de Nuit Intense Man exists. So, Club de Nuit being one of the most popular fragrances in the fragrance community is still a, a well, hidden secret. You know, we have great power through the internet, we can uh, reach a lot of people, but you gotta understand that the world is a big place and most people don't even know that a fragrance community exists. Let's get started. And number eight is Pure ISOE Super. Now you can go and buy Molecule 01 by Eccentric Molecules. Those guys are making a killing because ISOE Super is dirt cheap and they are making a fancy brand out of it, making it seem very scientific and uh, mysterious. When you can buy non-branded stuff uh, for maybe a quarter of the price, it's, a, it's the same molecule, it gets you a lot of compliments. It's very much a minimalist sort of fragrance for the kind of guy who wants something that makes you smell fresh, musky, woody all day. Eight to 10 hours gets you a lot of compliments. It kind of sort of smells like a chemical, but the nicest smelling chemical you will experience and you will find that has a weird effect where it goes out of your uh, perception of scent and it comes and goes throughout the day all of a sudden you're getting whiffs of it even though you think it's gone so it's a cool experience and it's a nice frames to own in your collection because you can use it as a base where you spray it first and then put other things on top of it a well hidden secret in the, in the fragrance community most uh, you know 99% of the population are not going to know what ISO E super is so yeah try it out guys Number seven will be Mancera's Black Gold. Mancera as a brand in itself is a hidden gem within the fragrance community, but this is even more hidden in the brand itself. Everyone knows Cedra Boise, Oud Lemon Mint, Instant Crush. Black Gold smells like lavender from Zaharov Signature Porom, nice and clean. It had a baby with Mancera's Oud Lemon Mint, getting the woodiness from that fragrance and then also had a baby with a rose petal. So it smells like a fresh, woody shower gel scent that has an oriental, Middle Eastern touch to it. It's technically a rose and oud fragrance, but it's very well balanced overall. It has that synthetic <laughs> mass appeal that Mancera always has. It's long lasting, extremely versatile. I have a sample of it currently. You may be wondering why I do have a sample. That's a good question. I would recommend that it is full bottle worthy. It is a great alternative to the usual things like Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel. L'eau d'Isse Noir Ombre by Isse Miyake. There I was in 2018 watching the fragrance community go on and on about Dolce & Gabbana the One Eau de Parfum. We all know it as a sexy date night amber fragrance with shocking performance. I always wondered ever since I smelled that fragrance, which I, which I do love, I love that fragrance, I always wondered, is there a longer lasting alternative? Dolce & Gabbana disappointed us with flankers like the one Eau de Parfum Intense, which ended up having similarly bad performance. However, I eventually saw this fragrance being constantly talked about in the online community. Noir Ombre has one of the best ratings on Fragrantica. I had to acquire it. I don't think this fragrance is discontinued, but it's always tricky to find. But if you do get it, 
you're gonna get a beast mode of an amber fragrance. It is not a clone of the one at all, but it's got its own really unique sort of oriental um, amber scent to it. It's amber that's very dense, beast mode, 12 hours longevity, strong projection with a sort of incense vibe. I don't think, I don't think incense is in the note breakdown, but sort of got an incense vibe to it. It's got spices, a strong leather note. It is a very sexy, strong performing amber fragrance that most people will not ever smell because it's just <laughs> how difficult it is to get. It's a hidden gem in the brand. If you're not you know, savvy in the fragrance community, you will get fantastic value for money for this. This, this smells like a niche fragrance in a designer house. Norton and Wilson's Bon Viveur. For transparency's sake, I will say that this fragrance was gifted to me by Mr. Smelly, who is one of the co-founders of this brand. So this is, is a YouTuber's brand. We hit, hit each other up, me and uh, Dan were talking, uh, you know, via Instagram, and we were just discussing, you know, business, how to create a brand. We work with the same perfumer. So I was very much grateful and interested in trying this out. Uh, because <laughs> I knew this would be extremely high quality. Um, this is John Steven, a, a, the perfumer I'm working with. So of course I'm gonna be a bit biased because he's someone I'm working with. However, um, this gets me a lot of compliments. All right, I'll just straight up say it. Bon Viveur I think is very much underrated in the Norton & Wilson brand. Everyone knows Gravitas first because it came out uh, as their, their debut. Gravitas is a nice fragrance, essentially Mr. Smelly loves his barbershop scents. You like barbershop scents? You need to check out this brand. Like they're both extremely good. Gravitas is more of the uh, vanilla heavy side of barbershop fragrances. So they take a modern barbershop DNA, put in a lot of vanilla, making it have a lot of complexity and nuances to it. This is going more in a spicy green direction. It's more fresh. I love <laughs> fresh, spicy, sharp barbershop scents. I did not like this fragrance when I first tried it out, Bon Viveur. I just kind of felt like, oh, it's a summery version of Gravitas, which is unfair. First of all, this gets you very good performance. I get eight hours and it gets me so many compliments. Like this was like, well, it's mainly men in fairness who gave me the compliments. So it's a boxer dropper, guys. If you guys, <laughs> if you guys like Creed Aventus, the boxer dropper fragrances, get Bon Viveur. This gets me so many compliments. And when I tell people, you know, this is Norton and Wilson, I'm sorry, like, uh, us YouTube community people will know Norton and Wilson, but a lot of people will be like, who's that? So my experience is that when you mention a brand that's not the generic mainstream like Chanel or YSL, people will usually not remember anyways, unless you write it down for them. So this is easy to keep as a well-hidden secret, but I'm gonna say in the community, we need to go support Mr. Smelly because he's created some fantastic fragrances, both Gravitas and this are phenomenal. I actually prefer Bon Viveur for, between the two. I wear this so often. Like, <laughs> honestly, this is like one of my favorite fragrances to wear at the moment. It's just so uplifting, so high quality, complex, smooth. Like, yeah, pff, fantastic. Really good signature if you want barbershop fragrances. Zerjoff 40 Knots. Again, unless you're a rich Middle Eastern prince, who shops at Harrods and Selfridges every day, you probably won't even know what Zerjoff is as a brand. So this, again, is gonna be in the minority of people who know it uh, as a brand in general, and then 40 Knots is just super underrated. Like Naxos, Uden, um, Neo, these are the more popular phrases in the Zerjoff brand, but 40 Knots, like, I don't know why it was so cheap when I found it online. I went to All Beauty, I found it for 140 pounds, got it 50 mils, two sprays of 40 Knots just fills up the room. It's a strong summertime fragrance. It's so strange. It's a salty, ambery, woody summertime fragrance, which is a very unique concept for summertime that is very versatile. It's become one of my favorite fragrances in my entire collection. So don't tell anyone about it, guys. So. Watch this, watch this video and keep it all to yourself, guys, because this is easily like beast, beast mode, like quality beast mode performance signature material. If you really want that memorable signature scent, 40 knots is not something to sleep on. So no, check it out if you can. Aaron Terrence Hughes Tabac. Again, for transparency, Aaron Terrence Hughes sent me all of his fragrances or the majority of them in a big box. This one easily stood out to me. Tabac is just went straight to the top of my fragrance list again. Um, so 
Everyone knows Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanilla. It's Tobacco and Vanilla. This fragrance is actually called Rebranded. It used to be called Aaron Terrence Hughes Tobacco Oud and Vanilla. So there we go. That's the, <laughs> this fragrance explained. It is those three notes. I feel like it takes something like Tobacco Vanilla and just elevates it. Adds that sharp woodiness from the Oud that's just complex, dense and rich. This is beast mode. Uh, tobacco Vanilla stays with me for like 12 hours, but it's a softer projection. This is much louder and I get 24 hours of this. I've always said to everyone that it is a safe blind buy to get this as a 10 ml. I see that on Aaron's website, this is frequently sold out, especially in the US crowd and Max Aroma. So this is always sold out for a reason. It sounds phenomenal. <laughs> if I just, just heard a description of this fragrance, I would want to buy it. And I can tell you, I can confirm it smells amazing. It's literally like, if you want to stand out on a special occasion, this is gonna be difficult to beat. Try this out, guys. Alexandria Fragrances, 1981X. Going back to Zerzhov, Zerzhov Naxos Masterpiece Fragrance. This is a clone of it. Alexandria Fragrances is predominantly a clone house. Now, Naxos itself, similar to uh, Tabak, is gonna be a very special occasion kind of fragrance. This is more of a daily fragrance. This is kind of like a 90% similarity. Uh, clone to Naxos that kind of makes it a bit more casual to wear and it just smells beautiful. If you like the idea of honey, tobacco and lavender mixed together to make a perfect balanced scent, this is sexy. This is really, I think, could be easily someone's go-to date fragrance. Like this smells so sexy, it's a bit softer to the skin. When I, like, when I bought this as a sample originally, this is one of the fragrances from the house that stood out straight away. Um, it's not a fragrance that is similar to another fragrance by this house I'm going to show you guys that's like beast mode, catches everyone's attention. It's the kind of fragrance that gets discovered on you. When some of my friends smelled this, and they, when they came close to me, then they were always like, wow, this just smells really high quality. The blend is really well done here. Um, I, so I think if you want a girl to remember you, you wear something like this and don't tell anyone about it. And this lasts a good eight hours. Alexandria Fragrances, Hafez 1984. This is the fragrance I was referring to. This is the original creation from the brand that is beast mode. This got me so many compliments when I first got it as a sample. This, when I was just wearing this all the time, I fell in love with this. The sexiest, spicy, boozy whiskey and vanilla fragrance. Like this is just perfection for an evening scent. You wanna wear this to a gig, I wear this to live gigs, gets you a lot of attention. Two sprays, fills up a room. It's it, impressive. I got this as a 2022 bottle, so this is the modern formulation. It's still beast mode, 12 hours loud projector. This is something that people always ask me, what are you wearing? And I tell them, again, in similar effect as before, I say it's Alexandria Fragrance Affairs <laughs> in 1984. Most people are just like, what? what? Okay, uh, and then they forget about it. So it's easy to keep this as a secret. I've not smelled this on anyone else. Some people say this smells like Mancera Red Tobacco. Fine, I think this is better than Red Tobacco, but either way, both of those fragrances, I've yet to smell them on anyone else. They can still be kept as a secret and they're both great. And people say like, Omar, you're selling these fragrances as something affordable, but these are 30 ml bottles. Sure, they're not that affordable. Tobacco is 10, 10 ml is what I recommend as well, which I think makes it very affordable. And the reason I say that is because not every one milliliter is born equal. One milliliter of Versace Mano Fresh is not the same as one mil of this. You are going to do fine with just 30 mils of this. Like this, as I said before, two sprays fills up a room. That, like don't over purchase too many bottles that you don't need in your collection that gather dust. They are not born equal. Higher quality stuff is gonna project and perform better. It's gonna do you fine in your collection. Like tobacco as well, if you're gonna wear it as a special occasion fragrance and how strong it is, 10 ml is gonna do you very fine. Especially if you have other fragrances in your collection, which is very likely if you're watching this video. And that concludes the video guys. What did you think of this concept? I've now revealed secrets to you that you cannot tell anyone else. So, if you see anyone else in the fragrance community who knows my channel, just pretend that you don't know each other. If you watched this video, no you didn't, okay? Keep it to yourself, guys. Make sure to check out our other videos as well whilst you're here, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.